Now, the general problem I see here uh, is promising migrant workers uh, the heaven in Saudi Arabia, and you forget to tell them about the hell that may happen the other side. They leave Uganda only waiting to earn the salary. They go for salary, in other words. All they go for is salary. And what they know is better life after earning a salary. They have not been oriented about what possibly can happen or what inexperience has happened that they should be awaiting for. They haven't been told, like you may tell any, any soldier going for a battle, that it will share. Wherever you are going, it will share. So when you hear the noise of the gun or the missiles, please, this is how they take cover. This is how they do or they protect. Uh, you can protect yourself. I don't think that has been emphasized. That's why we have ended in a situation of accusations, counter accusations, malice, character assassination. You can name it from the grounds of the battle. Which battle? The battle in Saudi Arabia. This battle of labor, labor migration battle. People don't want to call it a battle because they lie to those they are taking in this battle that it's all about roses. And they cannot afford to tell them the truth. Therefore, they have left Uganda knowing they have gone to sleep in a bed of roses. And when they reach uh, Saudi Arabia, little do they know that it's total hell and the reality is different. Now, after beginning to face the realities, they overreact. They act overzealously towards the situations. They, some of them do confabulate stories relating on the history. Some of them are sleeping in, in phobias, full of phobias, that their blood is, is filled with phobia flowing throughout the body. They fear anything. Someone cannot see her boss, maybe preparing her clothes or uh, something, a knife to go and slaughter a sheep or whatever. And she fails to, to allege that this person wants to take away my organ. That makes me think, uh, ask a question, do these people just jump over organs and they, they, they go grab them? Which kind of organ transplant is that? That someone will just be jumped over and then all of a sudden the organ is taken because this is the propaganda being spread. It is true. One of our own lost a kidney within the process. But that does not mean that everybody that is in Saudi Arabia is there to serve the organ. I have not seen it. Maybe it is somewhere hidden. Oh, some people are hiding this evidence. Or even among us, those who are complaining, that they know who has ever given in his liver, uh, lungs, as I hear, mawoworo, mawugwe, and all that sort of uh, whatever uh, allegations. I haven't seen any. The only person I know is Nachin to Judith, clearly known for having lost a kidney. And the case is moving. Where are other cases of Mawowo, Rob, Yugwe? Where are you reporting them? Why don't you report them to police? And then we see how they, you know, we can follow up on them. For how long are we going to continue like this? Into allegations, into uh, shouting here and there. This is all happening because of lack of a leadership among this category of workers. A category of workers which is well known that is cleared by government. It is recruited under government by RATO, clearly under a contract. This category of worker must be clearly identified. And its members should have guidelines.
should have disciplinary committee, should have an administrative point. They should have always a point of redress for them to bargain. They should have a right to collectively bargain for the common good. If you don't give them that, then whatever plans you are planning, you are bringing applications, you are bringing whatever, we shall put applications for them to, to always call, we shall put systems to clear them, we will remain, your systems will die in vain, all the efforts you are trying. They, will, they won't be effective if you do not integrate the element of physicality of the people who are supposed to be handling these human beings. Because you're not preparing any gadgets where you're going to put chips. Migrant workers are not chips. These Ugandan migrants in particular are not chips, they're not electronic gadgets that you're going to insert chips in them so that you can trace them, you can track them on Google, you can do ABCD, they can report using this. No. The fact is that they have proved you, even if you bring an application, they will use that application to prove you that they remain suffering the same. And you won't do anything. You are the very people saying that the guys, I mean, you are putting systems to trace them. Aren't you tracing them now? What's wrong? What's the problem? Why are they continuing to, 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 to suffer, to call, to shout? Somebody dies and it becomes, you know, you know, it becomes, it goes viral. Can you imagine? I just think about these companies, sometimes whom they, they put on to or Kaririro, that uh, character kind of assassination, live, simply because it is forgetting to, to manage issues in a compromise, simply because it was left to defend what it doesn't know. Because most of these girls die in the line of work. Others commit suicide due to the oppression and the tortures. Others do, you know, die in very different circumstances. But who is there to fall up on that? Apart from the consulate, which has never delivered us anywhere. Because the consulate in Jeddah, I mean in Dubai or Jeddah, they are compromised. I want to be straightforward to them. They may be trying their best. But they are compromised. Why? They cannot be standing in a position of government which is blamed and then they get to be the very people to report and represent workers. That's where the compromise is. They are compromised that they want to speak on behalf of workers or to, to, to keep quiet, claiming to have managed the issues of workers, which they cannot explain to workers. In the end of the day, they have no way to explain to workers. Workers are ever left in suspense. They have got no leadership that tells me or tells them that this is the final word. This is the, 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 the final word or the, 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 the final information concerning this allegation or this issue. They have got no one that has been identified for them. Any fool can come out and speak to them. So the embassy in Riyadh, the embassy in Riyadh, is in, in compromise, big compromise. It has got to keep the position of government. At the same time, it wants to pretend to be the one representing the workers, which is an error. The Vienna Convention, uh, 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 the people who formed these conventions were not stupid to tell you that uh, people, people in, uh, at the embassy cannot defend these nationals. You cannot defend them. They were not stupid to tell you that the lawyers must take up their cases not you to begin speaking in their defense. This is where the problem is, that now when issues of labor arise, the embassy officials want to claim they are now on top of it and they conceal the information on top of not having even details. Because not, not that they have all, all details of Ugandans in Saudi, even though they claim to be, uh, you know, in charge, but if you ask them, most of them are unaware of where these girls are. They are not connected or coordinated with these companies that are sending these workers. Most of the time you find the embassies asking for details. 
And you wonder, when did this begin? What was the purpose of a clearance when a, a full embassy has no details of nationals in a country where it has a jurisdiction? And in the capacity of labor, in that line, you're also asking the reporter, give me details. Shame on you. That's where we say you are compromised. If we are to take an example, and in our bid as migrant workers' voice, we would like you to separate this. If you don't separate it, you are going to remain into this chaos. It will continue as it is, as you see this status quo. It will continue. Don't dream by formulating, bringing more systems. These are human beings. You cannot control them by gadgets. You should get back to your normal senses. Get back to your normal senses. You are going to die. You mean these systems will be the ones to continue counseling and guiding these workers? The thing is simple. As you have, we have seen here today, the army, the army boys of Uganda and the other East African countries that go to Mogadishu, go to Mogadishu when they have been told the truth that is happening in Mogadishu. Actually, some of them are even bribing to be joined on the list of those that will go to Mogadishu. Don't they know? They know. They have been told it is going to shell. It is a war. You are going to risk. You are going in a war zone whereby your life will be at risk. Government understood that. And even when the, the, the Al-Shabaab or the, the, the Somalis chased away uh, the, uh, the American, Americans in, 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 a, in a Somalia, the Americans did not rest. They looked for the weaker nations or these poor nations like Uganda. And they managed to use their armies to go still and fight a proxy war in, 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 in Somalia. They started risking the poor African Ugandans, but they did not just risk them without, uh, without guarantees, without insurance, without insuring them, giving them an incentive into the risk. They did not, the Americans did not accept these Ugandans or these uh, Amazon people to go to Mogadishu without any, any incentive. And now, Today, what attracts these people to continue going to Mogadishu are the incentives, including around $50,000. $50,000. That was promised for every family of a, of a soldier who dies in Mogadishu. Some people have risked to go to Mogadishu just because they know even if I die, my family will get this money. Some people have done so. They have gone there because they want that money. Others have gone there because of the better pay, the better salary that is paid to them. Because on top of the other 50,000 that is promised to Mogadishu, a soldier, these guys uh, from Amazon, there is also other allowances and other monies that come along. That if you don't die from there, still you can come back home rich. Assured that even when you, you have anything happen that side, your family here will be in charge. I mean, government will take charge. That could families of these soldiers that are going to Amazon. How many of these family members of these Amazon people have you heard them shouting on social media? Oh, what fair fee day, what fair fee day? How many? How many have you seen them moving their photos, how their relatives have died from there? How many have we seen going to, to, to Mogadishu and their bodies? have been returned here and the social media now floods of you know our owners died oh somebody dies from there and then we begin shouting muguze, when i returning the body please return the body immediately so what and so what when they return the body immediately mm -hmm. i mean when you return the body immediately from saudi arabia and you bury it without any cover without anything of what impact is the return of that body do you just enjoy to return a dead body that you are not interested in even covering a life, or you just don't know what you're talking about. Because that, that, that now uh, 
lingers in, in, in my brain. You are only interested in the dead body. Why are you not so hard on when this girl is leaving the country? That how would this girl's life be protected? Without an insurance, without a social welfare package or whatever attachment. How will her children, because I've heard you several times talking, Era, she had children, she had what, she had what, husband. Were those people not there before? They were there. I mean, when she was being seduced to go by these companies, didn't she know that she had children? The question is, how best do the Amazon people, the people that are selected to go in Amazon, how do they... Uh, how do they fit to go in Amazon? Do they pick any boys and girls from the streets of Kampala to go to Somalia simply because there is a war and anybody can die from there, therefore they can't risk their good soldiers? No. They have actually risked the best soldiers who can manage the war. Now the element of improving standards, training, and, and giving skills, the real thing, the real time experience teaching it to these soldiers before they leave to Mogadishu is vital. It is key. Such that when you are selected to go to Mogadishu of Saudi Arabia, you will be fit for a battle. But how many companies are ready to organize these workers? Besides, do how many uh, groups of Amazon people, I mean, training Amazon, that we have Amazon Ruero, we have Amazon Group that, you know, Masaka, we have Amazon so and so, and the company Limited, we are all training soldiers that are going to, to Somalia. Is it like that? Government does not do like that. Its program comes in a journal. I mean, it gives them a way to generally even regulate and get to follow up on these soldiers because they go as a group. They go in a tracty way. They know they have sent this kind of combat. They know how many are they, you know, what are their names. They know all the details. They can trace. But how many Ugandans in Saudi Arabia can we trace that have been cleared by Minister of Gender? How many? It's like sending soldiers to to Amazon, and you don't know at the end of the day, you can't trace them in the numbers, you don't know where others are. This is where you find that some of them now, when they reach there, they join Amos, they join uh, Al Shabab and they turn against their government. It is that possibility. They instead, because you can't trace them. I mean, am I saying anything alien? It's not alien. Look at the situation of Saudi Arabia and the Ugandan migrant workers exported there. Does the Minister of Labor know even, can it identify that according to the way this girl is talking, is clearly our girl? They will begin from denying. Chibichi Guanawala. We don't know that Sadhus are lying, the liars, they are trafficked girls, they are what? How do these girls you clear to Mugadishu of Saudi Arabia reach there? And you, you clear them actually under a government program. A government bus. They all board a government bus. They reach there and they turn to begin talking negative and whatever and whatever they talk against your own your own army, your own bus. Because all they talk when they reach in Saudi Arabia, all they talk, those who have run away, those who are doing whatever, they are not almost all of them are against the thing, your actions of exporting them. But you never listen to them. When soldiers join Mogadishu and they reach there, you hear them talking about we don't eat. They are doing ABCD. They can they, they become dangerous because they can use the same guns against you and the same tactics you told them. This is happening in Saudi Arabia. The unruly tendency, I mean the unruly character of migrant workers has been cultivated by the very the very administrators, the very ministry people in authority you know especially those holding the political the political power in the ministry you have done us more harm than good you always think what you have decided will be now final 
leaving gaps. You fail to embrace the workers' leadership. You fail to embrace, to recognize these workers' leadership, to have, to have a, a, an organized body which can always spasi and guide their issues. But you choose to go in bed with the trainers, the commandos who train them to go into this, this, this war zone. And then at the end of the day, when suffering begins or when it begins sharing, you begin telling us how some of them are less trained, poorly trained, you know, they are bad people and we can't give them more salary because you know they are substandard. Why would you take substandard? Why would you take substandard? Why would Uganda risk the army to, to Amazon, which is substandard? The end of the day, when these boys die from there, everybody will blame. Now the excuse will be, you know, some of them were not trained well. Those who are not trained well, why did you take them? Why did you end them there? Isn't that risking them? A lot of questions. It is risking them without an incentive that actually attracts them. Apart from them going for a salary, we are fetching 900. We are going for this 900. Everyone from any part of the country, I'm going to get the 900. Only that, they don't think it is almost a war zone they are heading. They don't think so. They're not told the truth. At the end of the day, they return. I mean, they, be, they, they reach there. They begin crying for help. Even you who sent them there, you cannot help them. Even when they return, for those who survive narrowly and return home, they get a hard landing because they have got nothing home. They have got nothing to assist them in Uganda. Unlike the soldiers that go to, to Amazon, who are attracted by the incentives in it, that you'll be given $50,000, or your family will be offered $50,000, and you yourself will be better paid. You will be armed. Therefore, what you need are, are your techniques, I mean, your, your zeal and the determination to go and face the battle without retaliation. But here we are, we have the trainers, the companies who are telling girls to go and then the only escape route is running away or the only way to sol solve their problems in the war, such as that in Saudi Arabia, is to run away. That wherever there are issues, we shall transfer. You will change, you will give up. You will give up, you will give up, and we give you. You will give up and you will give you. You will give up and we give you. That has also mixed the whole field into confusion. Because even if there is, is a small thing someone can be patient about, they have decided to abandon, to give up, because they were told, when you give up, we shall give you. Causing chaos and conflict among the, 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 employee, the employers. Because employers, these employers invest in money to sponsor these workers. And when these workers reach there, you have already told them a bad mind to act in contrary. When you give up, we shall give you. We shall replace. We shall replace. Transfer, replace. How would you pro how would you promise people on a contract of two years that anything that shakes in, you shall transfer without reasons? This is where they have turned it into a song, and then they have been left to turn the excuses into organ. Everything that happens in the house. I, I run, I, I mean, I, I dream it when they are taking my kidney. I dream it when they are taking my organ. I dream it my lungs when they were being taken. I dream it, that's what is spreading. But to some of us, we cannot be fooled for all the years. We have told you straight in the eye, what you are doing is what is killing and exposing these Ugandans. You could do better if you agree that you have got to involve the workers themselves and incentivize the business. Train well. Make sure the training is that that meets the standards and the real time. Train well. Incentivize. If you incentivize this, you will see people who are going to Amazon are even bribing. They are bribing to be put on the list to go to, to Somalia. They bribe because they know it is really good. So if you incentivize this kind of business you are saying you are doing, and you don't only focus on your profit, you put incentives, you allow workers to also benefit in extra as you do. 
you will see them willing to go and protect that that incentive they will protect it but they here here they are having nothing to protect apart from the small salary and once they try to push and they find that the salary is also not easy to to get they will give up the rope and they let it go they let it go and they run away now that's how they turn into problems but if somebody goes and knows even if even if it all fails if i keep my contract I will be compensated. Something will be given to me in order for me to start up. Something, even if I'm challenged here and there, justice will come if I, I keep this line. I keep my lane and I don't minder. Some of them have ended up mindering here and there, misled by fellows. You know? Because there is no there's nothing that attracts them, no social welfare, no insurance to cover these guys. If they have so, we would be the country itself would be making more money in terms of remittances. The, the, these business people, the company people, would be getting more customers into their business because people will now stop being trafficked. They all line up for safe labor. Ah, when I go through the company, ah, I will be catered for in terms of A, B, C, D. I cannot lose such a chance. I have seen some mothers that daughter who died in such and such a way. It was very hard for them. And now their family is not being catered for. When you do that, does that cause you cancer, skinny cancer? I want to ask my brother Isakato and the rest in the business. Sorry to pronounce your name. Does that irritate you and cause you skinny cancer? Because you have given you Ugandan migrant workers incentives to benefit also from whatever the bad choice they choose or you are just taking advantage of their desperate being under unemployment or oh, this irritating un unemployment in uganda then you take advantage because you know you have exposed them to unemployment here deliberately under the tag of cheap labor. Now you let them go the other side, they become vulnerable, but they learn to your mass, they remain to your mass, only to your mass. And then that's how they have kept in the middle of the game, of the ring. They are here and there, they toss them in Uganda and they toss them in Saudi Arabia. They have been confused home and away. Is that what we want? That's why I conclude by saying, that let everyone respect the decision is taking. Let the companies that are deliberately not interested into the, the, the uh, amalgamation of workers into their affairs, let them suffer. Let them uh, <laughs> respect the captivity of negativity as they continue to be negative towards what we are trying to suggest. Let them feel it. We shall not talk about the bloggers who are hitting you east, left, right, center. We shall not stop anyone who comes out to allege and talk any stupid thing about you. We shall not stop any migrant worker who wants to allege organi, whatever they want to shout and embarrass this country as a voice. We shall not because you have deliberately chosen to do so. And most of you choose to do so because you want to remain trafficking in the system. You know once you bring us in, we shall know how you traffic. So we know your reasons. You don't need to, to even actually explain a lot. Continue trafficking, continue hiding your heads in the sand, but you wait for your turn. When your turn comes, you will also go off the map like the Middle East and others. You will go off the map. We have got no other option for you. What we are choosing for you or we are suggesting in a good heart and for the good of the country, because some of us are Ugandan, purely Ugandan. We have got no other country. It's only Uganda. When we talk like this, we mean to protect the image of the country that is being portrayed or casted in, in, in a bad image outside there. That we can only save this image as Ugandans, regardless, without considering any political party. Because the business of, of Ugandans going to Saudi Arabia does not only take members of people power or NRM. It takes all of us including those who don't have any party. So we are, we are uh, non-partisan when we are talking about these issues. They affect us, even though we call the political players to take a quick decision. 
We, can, we cannot sit down to see the image of our country being spoiled by a few people. Which few people you have failed actually to help. You have just abandoned. And yet you would do better. Only that you deliberately want to, to, to pay a deaf ear. That's why we keep saying, respect your decision. And we want, we want, we want you even to lose those licenses. This time around, we may distance, but if it ever lands in our office and we get into it with evidence, we shall, we shall teach you also a lesson. We shall teach you because you have failed to embrace the right procedure, including the ministry officials who are just adamantly not interested in to embracing order. They are only interested in how much they earn or they, 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 they fruitfully gain from this kind of business and return it to URA. They don't care whether they have a budget or they don't to, to, to go or to facilitate this kind of welfare. You know? So here we are. We told you as migrant workers, we are ready to support some of our activities once we brought together, once a, 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 general, a general command comes from the administration, the Minister of Gender, the regulator, once we get regulated, because we are now unruly, as you regulated these licensed companies, the same way we want you to regulate us. Regulate us. If you cannot, then you wait for more. And sometimes it may not stop as uh, whatever you may think. It may land in a very bad, in a very bad position of jeopardizing even the security of the state. I want to end my, my, my speech here. And I'm sending this message to you all stakeholders. Think twice about your rigidity, about your greed, about your hesitations. Think twice about the decisions you are taking that do not or that do, ex do exclude workers. The workers have remained, you know, to talk anything without being guided. I hope you take my message. I thank you.